Okay, so there's his riff, and I'm sure everyone heard it. I never used to be a troublemaker. Can't take back the love that I gave you. A life in chains, got my hands in chains. A F E L L A, verbal ink they spray. Whenever you want that. But of course, all these songs sampled the original Shape of My Heart by Sting. He deals the cards as a meditation. But did you know there's so much more to this riff than you might expect? And besides that, playing it absolutely right, it's it's tough. And that's also because there's a few downright impossible chord shapes that even the original guitarist tries to avoid when he plays it live. So the song Shape of My Heart is co-written and played by guitarist and composer Dominic Miller. And apparently it started out as an exercise, which considering everything really did not surprise me. So let's get going. So this entire riff is based on a descending bass line in the key of F sharp minor, fret nine on the A string, and it goes like this. He deals the cards as a meditation. Those he plays. Kind of boring, right? Playing just the bass by itself. So let's turn it into chords. And the most obvious choice with these bass notes is to play a progression called the Andalusian Cadence. It's a typical Spanish sounding chord progression that sounds like this. <laughs> and in the key of F sharp minor, the original key of this song, it sounds like this. Wait a second, because we clearly hear this riff should be played with finger picking, right? So there's one particular picking pattern that I love. It's called Travis picking. And to those who don't know, I made a whole video about it. You can check it out over here. And this is how it sounds with these same chords. That sounds kind of cool actually, but I want to spice this up with two new ingredients. So first we add a seventh chord and secondly we add suspension. So the seventh chord, on the five chord of this progression, so any five chord in the minor key by the way, so in this case C sharp minor, the last chord, we can turn it into a dominant seventh chord. And that resolves beautifully back to the tonic, the F sharp minor. Lovely. So, and now to suspension. So I'm sure we've all seen it abbreviated as sus, sus4 in this case. So when the chord changes from the D chord to the C sharp seven, one note from that D chord is held over against that C sharp seven, creating a C sharp seven sus4 back to C sharp seven, and then resolving back to F sharp minor. Sounds kind of classical, right? Lovely. Anyway, it sounds like this. All right, fine, but not really great. We need two new ingredients. Syncopation and spread triads. So first spread triads, it's well, we're playing bar chords right now, right? And whenever I can, I really try to avoid playing bar chords. It's just kind of annoying, actually. So I'm just playing the three notes we need to form any major or minor chord. So in this case, just three. So this is a spread triad instead of the closed triad. So spread triad. And then we play these spread triads using a syncopated rhythm. So this is where the accents lie on the off beats or even in between of the eighth notes. So, uh, Syncopation, sort of where the notes fall on unexpected places. So spread triads and syncopation, it sounds like this. Oh, wait a second, I'm, I'm forgetting about the bass, because to that syncopation we need to add something we call anticipated bass. This is where the bass note of the new chord actually comes in just before the new chord is played. So in this case the chord changes on the first beat, the downbeat, and on the third beat. So just before beat one and just before beat three we actually play the bass note of the new chord. So syncopation, anticipated bass, spread triads combined, it sounds like this. You 
Did you catch that last chord transition? We drop the anticipated bass entirely and move very quickly from D to C sharp. That's something that many seem to miss, but still we're not close to the original. And that is because we're getting something massively wrong. Some might have already noticed this, but the chords we're playing are actually not the ones that are used in this riff. So in Rick Beato's interview with Sting, Dominic Miller showed us it was classical music that got him to write this riff. The use of sixth chords. And that's exactly what happens on the second and the third chord of this riff. So when we move over from F sharp to E major, on that E chord we raise the fifth so it becomes sixth. So right after the F-sharp minor chord to E6. Ooh, and on D we do the same thing, the D chord. We raise the fifth to the sixth, play the third on top, Ooh, D6, and then to C sharp, so it's four. It sounds great, so like this. There's a way more friendly way to fret these new chord shapes we now created. This is a bit tricky. We can adjust the same notes, the same chords, changing just the fingering so it sounds more smooth when we transition between the chords. So F sharp minor instead of like this, we play it like this. E6 instead of this, we play much more easy. And it sounds like this. But there's one big problem, because I think we're using the term sixth chords all wrong. So there's a way more obvious way to explain these chords, inversions. That second and third chord actually are played as a first inversion. So instead of calling this an E6 or this, it's just a C sharp minor played in the first inversion. C sharp minor over E. The second chord, instead of saying a D6, is just a B minor played as a first inversion. B minor over D. And then we get that C sharp 7. So you see, in a more traditional notating style called figured bass, the symbol 6 actually refers to a specific voicing of a chord or an inversion the first inversion to be more specific. So I think that's what Dominic Miller was talking about when he mentioned those six chords. So although the guitar is playing that B minor chord as a first inversion, B minor over D, Sting himself is actually playing the B as a bass note below it. So technically this is not even an inversion at all because you always have to look at the entire composition and find the lowest note played to determine whether it's officially an inversion or not. And what's even cooler right away is that now the second time around when we repeat everything, the new F sharp chord is also an inversion. It's on F sharp, it's a D over F sharp. So we move that index finger to fret seven. Inversion, first inversion, first inversion again. <laughs> Do that C sharp seven sound. So, and now with Sting on the bass, the entire first two rounds sound like this. Yeah, awesome. So if you think this was tricky, the next two chords are maybe the most painful ones ever to be played on the guitar. <laughs> and I remember playing this song when I was younger and I just could not pull it off. But before we go there. I love the acoustic guitar and that's exactly the reason why I made a guitar course just for the acoustic. It's called Acoustic Adventure. The starting point is this interactive map where you can explore all the awesome things the acoustic guitar has to offer. From swampy fingerstyle blues to strumming and all the chords you ever want to know. And from that John Mayer kind percussive guitar slap to Travis picking. If you love the acoustic, I think this course is an absolute no-brainer. So please check it out at acousticadventure.com. So now to those two chords that haunted me at night. 
First we go back to that B minor over D chord. We've seen this before, right? Nothing, nothing spicy. But, but now we need to add that ring finger on fret five on the high E string whilst we keep these one pressed down. It, oh, it is really tricky to get this down. The pinky needs to not touch the high E while also fretting down that seventh fret and then the ring finger is almost on the edge. It's really, really tricky to get this down. It's, it's It's, it's really tricky and what surprises me most is that actually Dominic Miller tries to avoid playing this chord when he plays it live. He does a sort of variation usually. And then he moves on to the new chord. But one thing that I did notice is that there was this video where he played actually the chord and I heard that high A note ringing, but I didn't see him fret the chord. Okay, so look at his left hand. You hear the high note, but he doesn't fret it. Let's do it again slowly. So I was like wondering what was happening. So my best guess is he tuned his high E string up to an F. And then he barred his index finger on the fourth fret, which is so much easier. But did he really do that? I'm not sure. I'm kind of surprised by this, but let's move on. Let's go. So you, you play the chord, you got it down, you pull it off, you're very happy, excited, the tricky bit is over. Well, the next chord can ruin it in again for you. So we move to that A chord, actually, that is. And it is just the weirdest chord. I mean, it's not super difficult. It's an A chord played as a G major shape. So it's derived from the open G chord. You move it up two frets and then your index finger bars the second fret. And I don't think he's actually playing the D string. In a lot of tabs you see it fretted down as bar, which is definitely possible, but I analyzed all his live footage and I never seen him play that D string. So I don't think he plays it, which makes it a little bit more easy. You just play the index finger fret two on the G string and then you do a hammer on from two to four. And this is quite stretchy, ow, ow, ow. So and then you go back to wait a second because there's such an easy answer to play these difficult chord shapes and it's just using an open string the open d string it's right there and then to the a chord the open a string it's so obvious but it has a different ring to it so i guess that's why dominic miller doesn't do the whole open string approach but if you want to get close to the sound that's your best option continue C sharp seven, and then we end with a lovely sort of vocal line on D. G sharp minor 11, and F sharp minor. So everything together with the bass sounds like this. over and over and the best thing halfway the song it all modulates down a fourth to C sharp minor and you play exactly the same chords exactly the same thing but now everything one string up and you need to accommodate some chord shapes for the B string and the G string it sounds like this back to C sharp minor and there you have it the full thing it is so gorgeous and to put my money where my mouth is well here's a small clip of just a few weeks back um, where Mary Spender my friend was visiting me and I jokingly said 
can you sing this song? And without any preparation, the moment that actually ignited the idea for this whole video, we jumped in. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out Acoustic Adventure if you love the acoustic guitar just as much as I do. And um, I hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. He deals the cards as a meditation Those he plays never suspect He doesn't play for the money he wins don't play for respect He deals the cards to find the answer The sacred geometry of chance The hidden laws of a probable outcome The numbers lead a dime That the spades are the swords of a soldier I know that the clubs are weapons of war I know the diamonds mean money for his art But that's not the shape of my heart Nice, thank you Thank, thank you. you so much Thank you what, can we watch it? Okay, so this score, you can keep the guitar if, it, if you can play it in one time. <laughs> oh my god. Right? Why would you write a song with this chord? <laughs>